This video is made for teachers and students of IB Chemistry, IB Biology, and IB Environmental Systems and Societies. The purpose of it is to engage students in meaningful practical work that can be related to the requirements of the internal assessment while working remotely. The only materials students will need to bring to this activity are this small bottle of vinegar, about 50 seeds of mung beans, vigna radiata, a ruler, and of course, any kind of plastic container or container of uniform size where they can get at least five of it and seal it with a few paper towels as well. All of that to answer this research question. How does pH affect the germination and post-germination growth of Vigna radiata, the mung beans? And we will be investigating this with this context or background. And that's where the ESS student must pay attention. Because if you're taking ESS, it's very important as you lay out your independent investigation to set a very strong context and to explain that context. So for ESS students, your context would be looking at acid rain and acid soils and the use of this investigation as a model. For IB biology students, you too must set some kind of background to your investigation, stating where the idea for the investigation came from, some kind of personal reason or connection to the investigation. And of course, that is not something that has to be given by the teacher, but given that this is a model investigation to set you up for the IA, I would say that you should talk about acid rain, acid soil, the use of models in science, but more specifically, we get to relate practical five to this activity, which is the use of the mesocosm, or a small piece of the natural environment is brought into the lab under controlled conditions. In this case, we are going to be controlling pH. That's going to be our dependent variable. And this is where IB Chemistry HL students will be engaged because manipulating the concentration of vinegar is a little bit more complicated than meets the eye. 5% vinegar, you might think, well, not very strong. And we could put some seeds to germinate in pure vinegar, then do a 50% dilution, a 25% dilution, a 10% dilution, and so on and so forth. And if you try that, it's quite possible that no seeds will germinate and you won't really change the pH of this vinegar by very much. And higher level chemistry students in topic 18 must study about weak acids. Vinegar, ethanoic acid, is a weak acid. And if we have a 5% concentration, and you know its density, which is 1.05 grams per cm cube, then you can work out the actual molarity of a 5% vinegar solution. And if you're told that vinegar has a pH of 2.5 and it's 5% concentration, and the chemistry data booklet says that acetic acid has a pKa of 4.76, then you can determine Ka and you can plug that into the expression for the dissociation of this weak acid and plug in this 5% concentration and then you can solve for the H plus ion concentration or the pH and you can verify that if this is 5% the density of vinegar is 1.05 grams per cm cube it's got a pKa of 4.76. You could verify that its pH is just about 2.5. And if you wanted to manipulate the pH starting from 2.5 to get a range of pHs that kind of models acid rain, it means you're looking at getting pHs around 3.5 to 4.5. And to do that, it's not a simple case of diluting this 50%, 25%, or 10% specific dilutions need to be carried out. And when you carry out those dilutions, you change the molarity or the concentration of the vinegar. Then that value 
needs to be plugged into the expression for the acid dissociation constant and you solve for the pH and then you would know exactly what dilution to make to get the specific pH that you need for this model. So you realize then that biology and environmental systems and societies need to collaborate with information from chemistry. And if you are an ESS student or you're a biology student and you're not taking chemistry, especially higher level chemistry to study this topic 18, then all of this could confuse you. But the good news is our chemistry students have already worked this out for you. And we are going to show you how to dilute your 5% vinegar pH 2.5 so that you can get a good range of pHs to carry out this research question. To get this good range of pHs, you should start by diluting the vinegar from the bottle, one part bottle to nine parts water. That's going to give you a 0.5% solution. And then because we don't have any graduated cylinders or measuring cylinders, we are going to measure in this container using a ruler and pour that liquid into a paper towel that is cut to a specific size. That's going to give us 0.5. Then if we take one millimeter height of the liquid from here and we make that up to nine parts water, then we would dilute this 0.5 to 0.05. And then out of that bottle where you have the 0.05, if you take one to nine again, and you make a new concentration, then you would get 0.005. And out of this, if you took 2 to 8, then you would get 0.001%. And then your final bottle contains pure water. So you have a range of concentrations. What pH do you have exactly? That's where you need the chemistry calculations because you don't have access to a pH meter at home. So therefore, it's very important that you can do this chemistry so that you can manipulate the pH on this side. Again, the good news for biology and ESS students is that I have done these calculations for you already and I will be sharing the pHs to go with all of these dilutions. So what you need to do next is to set your experiment up at home placing six mung beans with their micropyla, the little scar that the seed has at the side, facing down into the liquid. You place six of those and you put a cover on. It doesn't have to be a container like this one. You put a cover on and you let it sit for 48 hours. In that time, you would be able to tell what the germination frequency is. How many seeds have germinated within 48 hours? You continue to observe for another 48 hours. How many seeds have germinated then? And then you would have an idea of the answer to this question. How many seeds germinated in 48 hours? How many germinated in 96? Which pH did that correspond to? And then you go on using your closed system mesocosm to track post-germination growth, measuring the height of the young shoot, the length of the young root, and looking at the health of the plant in general to get qualitative data, like what the plant looks like, and quantitative data like the height of the young shoot and the young root. You would do this over two periods of 72 hours each. So we're looking at doing this entire experiment over a period of about 10 days. And once we get results, our next step is to look at how to organize and present the data for an IB Biology or an IB ESS IA report.